Now at 11, a naked man charges Portland police with a knife in his hand. A patient takes off with an ambulance crashing into cars. It's our worst nightmare. And a surfer fights off a shark that bit right into his board. Pulled me straight down, like, like a plumber. Plus, see when the snowflakes are set to return. And the big debate before prom. Should students have to pass a breathalyzer just to get through the doors? I just don't think it's appropriate. Your news starts now. We start tonight with a dangerous situation caught on camera in southeast Portland today. An officer stabbed when a naked man who appeared to be on something ran right at police. Take a look. I had a hatchet. Officers were called out to check on a man who was yelling and taking off his clothes near Hosford Middle School. A witness sent us this video of the incident. While the school went into lockdown, police tried to control the suspect. They say he was holding this hatchet and knife. At one point, he dropped the bigger weapons, but then you can see he charges at officers. Police say he had a smaller knife concealed in his hand, and as officers struggled with the man, a sergeant was stabbed. He wasn't seriously hurt. You can see officers eventually took that man to the ground, got him into custody. They say it appears he was intoxicated. They took him to the hospital to get checked out. And we want to thank Dawes Leon, who caught this incident on camera and helped us share the news with you tonight. If you see news happening in your neighborhood, let us know. Email us at newstips at kgw.com or just find us on Facebook. Now to another frightening situation involving first responders. Officers say a man in a mental health crisis stole an ambulance and took it on a joyride, hitting several cars along the way. KGW's Mike Benner, live for us outside American Medical Response Headquarters. That's in Southeast Portland. Mike, first of all, was anybody hurt in this? Surprisingly, no. Everyone involved in this is doing okay, including the paramedics who work for American Medical Response, or AMR for short. We can tell you this all started in deep southeast Portland. Reports of a man acting erratically turned into reports of a stolen ambulance and a wild joyride. Madison High School in northeast Portland. Look closely and you'll see a man sitting in the back of a police SUV. You won't believe how he ended up here. It all started around 12.15 Wednesday afternoon, near Southeast 151st and Stark. Authorities say a man was standing in the middle of traffic and yelling, maybe even throwing things at passing vehicles. Officers convinced him to go to the hospital for a mental health checkup. Not long after an AMR ambulance arrived on scene, the man somehow got behind the wheel and drove off, leaving behind the crew unharmed. We're told the man drove more than three miles to Southeast 82nd in Washington, where he crashed into at least three other cars. We caught up with one of those drivers. I'm fine. I'm not real, just, it was slow speed, just jumbled the cars up on the wet pavement. Police eventually caught up with the runaway ambulance and used a special device to flatten its tires. The ambulance came to a stop in the parking lot of Madison High School, where the suspect was taken into custody. It's our worst nightmare. I mean, regardless of what company we work for, EMS is a small community. Sean Wood is clinical manager at Metro West Ambulance, not AMR. So he's in no way connected to what happened, though he says it's a reminder of the dangers ambulance crews face on a daily basis. We respond and, and we have to be prepared for, you know, how the patient is presenting. You know, it could be could be just fine and it could be a pleasant transport and we get them the help they need or it could be, you know, a potentially dangerous situation. Yeah, and speaking of dangerous situations, just last week, not far from OHSU, there was an ambulance sitting at a stoplight when officers say a man with a knife attacked one of the paramedics. Fortunately, that paramedic was OK, just like the two involved today. Back to you. And that is the good news. No one was hurt. Thank you, Mike. We were treated to snowflakes without the fuss today. It wasn't sticking to the roads. It was kind of amazing. This was the view at Pittock Mansion this afternoon. Yeah, it was pretty. I like the way you put it, without the fuss. Yeah, no fuss. Large snowflakes, though. It was gorgeous coming down throughout the day. For the most part, though, didn't cause any traffic troubles. Let's Which check nice. in. Yeah, yeah, it is nice. Let's check in now with Chief Meteorologist Matt Tofino. Will we see more snow tomorrow, Matt? Yeah, if only it could only, always work that way, right? Fakes without uh, flakes without the fuss. Um, you know, and if you never looked at the ground or just looked at the sky and saw the snowfall, you'd think we'd have like half a foot or more, but a 
ground temperatures were just too warm to allow it to stick. But this was out in Happy Valley right at the end of the snowfall. And we had those big fat flakes like some of them were like two inches in diameter and it was sticking on the ground there. And I know there's still about an inch and a half, two inches of snow up in the West Hills right now, but we're getting a good break. There really won't be go much going on at all uh, for the next several hours through the overnight hours. But notice out along the coast, we're beginning to see some showers show up. And there's a pretty good mass of them offshore. Those will be rolling in about 5 a.m. or so we will begin to see snow once again. Temperatures have actually risen tonight now that the east wind has ended. Uh, but overnight tonight, not much going on until we get into like the 4 a.m. hour. Then we see about an eight tenths of an inch according to this model. If we look at a map of it, it kind of plays out that way. We're looking at a tenth of an inch, maybe building up to eight tenths of an inch. But I really think that's going to be up in the hills for the valley, probably less than that. So anywhere from a trace to a half an inch. Once again, I don't think it's going to be impacting the morning commute. Temperatures right now, as I said, have risen a bit, but we're still in the 30s, only 37 at the airport, 34 in King City, 36 in Beaverton. So close enough uh, the rest of the night, the next several hours, mostly cloudy, even some areas of fog. Uh, overnight temperatures close to freezing, but I think the valleys may just stay above, which would be great. Morning snow showers trace to maybe an inch, but those higher amounts like an inch mainly up in the hills. Another chance of snow, maybe one more to talk about before we get out of this completely. Back to you. All right, Matt, appreciate it. We'll see you soon. New tonight, should students have to take a breathalyzer test to get into school dances? The Salem Kaiser School District just started that practice, but some parents now are saying it's just not right. While you're listening to the story, we want to know what you think. Yeah, vote in our viewer voice poll by going to kgw.com slash vote or clicking on the viewer voice tile on our KGW app. Meanwhile, let's talk to KGW's Lindsay Nadrich. She's live in the newsroom talking about this story. You spoke to some of those parents tonight. Yeah, the parent I spoke with is concerned this violates her daughter's rights and worries what kind of precedent it will set. The school, though, says this is all about student safety. Prom is a big dance. Any of these dances are like the highlight of these kids' lives, and it's just not right. Stephanie says it's not right for her daughter, a student at Sprague High School, to be randomly selected to take a breathalyzer at a school dance. She believes the new policy violates her daughter's Fourth Amendment rights that protect against unreasonable search and seizure. I just don't think it's appropriate. In no other setting in this state are there breathalyzer checkpoints and it shouldn't be done in public schools. The Salem Kaiser School District, though, disagrees, saying attending an extracurricular event like a school dance is optional. So a random breathalyzer test doesn't violate anyone's rights. Instead, the district believes it will reduce the number of students who drink prior to a dance. I don't think the benefit outweighs the risk in teaching our kids that they should just be strong armed into allowing people to violate their rights. So now when students buy a dance ticket, they have to sign a form agreeing to a random breathalyzer. If they don't pass, they won't be let into the dance and the school resource officer and parents will be notified. Stephanie says she has no problem with students who are visibly intoxicated submitting to a breathalyzer, but she's not OK with students being selected at random. By all means, if my child shows up to your school function under the influence of intoxicants, please call Salem PD. Um, I'm for consequences. I'm for kids being held to a high standard. I am not for them being randomly selected for things that violate their rights. Well, I also checked with other schools to find out if anyone else uses breathalyzers. Both the Beaverton and Hillsboro school districts do have policies that allow them to use breathalyzers at school dances. Portland Public Schools did use breathalyzers at one time, but don't currently. And the Vancouver and Evergreen school districts don't use them. Back to you. Thank you, Lindsay. And you still have time to let us know what you think. Just go to KGW.com slash vote or click the viewer voice tab on your KGW app. We'll reveal the results later in the newscast. A Vancouver teenager saved her family this morning when she woke up to their house engulfed in flames. <laughs> I lost the fire in my house. What address? The front of our house is lit on fire. There's fire everywhere. You can hear her kind of coughing in that video there. That's Jenny Neung. She ran outside, realized, though, at the time that her grandmother, her mother, and brother were all still inside of the house. Jenny, on that call to 911, talking to dispatchers, they told her to break a window, so she grabbed a rock. I broke the window, and I was yelling to get out, and someone ran inside without my knowledge, and um, they dragged him out as I was breaking the window. Everyone did make it out of the house, the home. As you can tell in the video, nothing left. It's a, a total loss. Jenny's mother was taken to the hospital for burns on her hands and smoke inhalation. Secretary of State Dennis Richardson was honored at the Oregon Capitol today, remembered by colleagues as a man of great integrity. 
Godspeed, Secretary Richardson. Know that your legacy will live on. On the House floor, Oregon lawmakers from both sides of the aisle paid tribute to Richardson, who died a week ago after a months long battle with brain cancer. He kept working right up until the very end, fighting for children, democracy, and fairness in the electoral process. He was uh, a man of great civility in an era where we lack that. Um, quiet, tenacious, effective. Um, he got things done, and he did it in a, in a really, really positive way. Before being elected Secretary of State in 2016, Richardson served six terms in the state legislature. Coming up, an Oregon surfer feels pretty lucky tonight after he fought off a shark that took a bite out of his board. That was an interesting little wrestling match, and however you want to call it, and live to surf another day. Plus, how OMSI is changing its plans to cut ties with Michael Jackson after the release of a new documentary. And we are more than a quarter of the way to our goal of collecting one million pounds of food for the KGW Great Food Drive. This Friday from 4 until 6 p.m., the Oregon City Safeway will be hosting a special collection event. Or you can help out by buying Tillamook products this month. They'll donate a portion of the proceeds. You can also donate food at any local Toyota dealership. You can give cash at any River Mark or on kgw.com slash food drive. And through this Friday, Willamette Egg Farms will add a dozen eggs to any cash donation. We'll be right back.